Good morning, all of you. I know you all are very excited for Poonam Ma'am's lecture, and Poonam Ma'am going to teach us a very beautiful topic from science subject that is hereditary. So welcome, Poonam Ma'am. Very good morning, students. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. Now the rule for the class is all the cameras on. I just want to see the beautiful faces, just like the beautiful climate I'm having outside my window, right? Where are my students? Come on, cameras on, everybody. Uh, welcome students to today's class. So you can see outside it's a very beautiful climate, right? And it's very, uh, very nice. It's very cool and very beautiful, right? So students around you, you can see a very beautiful nature around you, right? The nature provides you a lot of things like plants. Plants has flowers, fruits and animals. Very beautiful faces of humans and a lot more living and non-living things, right? So I have a question for you. Where do you find roses? On yes. both hands. Very good. Where do you find apples? On apple trees. Wow, what a beautiful answer, Rashmi. Very good. Now imagine if instead of roses on the rose plant, you are able to see apples on the rose plant. Not possible. <laughs> okay, and you're able to see, and that is why I asked you to imagine, beta. You will see roses on the apple plant. Isn't it a very exciting imagination? I have some more. Okay. Uh, well, what do you call the young one of cat? Kitten. Okay. And a young one of uh, cow? Calf. Very good. So let's jumble them up. Okay. What we can do? We can think that a cat is giving birth to a calf and a cow is giving birth to a cat. Oh my God, it's really interesting to think about this higgly pickly kind of imaginations, right? But as Rashmi said, it is next to next to uh, poss uh, impossible, right? It is very impossible. Can you tell me what is the process? Uh, just tell me that what is the process by which an individual give birth to an individual of the same characters and I want Henry's no speaking by themselves. Yes. And no camera off. Yes. What is the process which leads to the development of individual of similar traits? You have studied it. Yes, 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 yes. Ashwini. Reproduction. Very good, Ashwini. And in the uh, in the nature, we find all kind of animals, different types of animals, different types of plant. So different, different types of living organisms. So there are different, different types of reproduction also, right? So what are the two types of reproduction? Hand raise again. Okay, Smita. Yes, ma'am. Sexual and asexual type of reproduction. Very good. Sexual and asexual type of reproduction. That's perfectly right. Okay. So, uh, what do you think uh, is actually related uh, or uh, you can say responsible for the passing of traits from the uh, one generation to the another generation? Can you think of something? Is there <laughs> like, yes. Okay, Swati. What is responsible for having the similarity in traits from one generation to another? OK, this is something new I'm asking. You might have been wondering that how is it possible that everybody say, oh, you look like your father. Oh, you look like your mother. Yes, ah. ma'am. Yeah, it is. a. Oh. It is because of chromosomes, ma'am. OK, there is a specific term for this. Genes. 
heredity very good my yeah. students are so smart they are studying you, it for the first time and they are getting it to know also right okay so the reason behind is it heredity right okay now you can see i have the picture of different 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 color eyes right we generally in uh, in india you will commonly see black brown eyes or gray eyes uh, but there are more colors of the eyes which you can see over here okay now we will do a small activity and what we are going to do is uh, you all are going to tell me uh, the color of eyes of your family member so we'll start with ashwarya ashwarya is am i writing your spelling uh, wrong okay she is not there. absent okay so we'll mark it as absent okay <laughs> okay ashwini ma'am uh, light brown okay you have to tell me what is the color uh, what is the color of eyes of your father mother brother uh, light brown color light brown color for father everybody uh for everybody almost in the house okay then what about manisha khanwe black ma'am all yes okay manisha singh all black okay rashmi yes black wow see as i told you in indian population you will commonly find black brown and gray eyes uh, basically commonly smita smita are you there you are on mute beta unmute yourself uh black all black yes yes okay swati ma'am all brown unmute yourself Tejasvi has put her oh. camera off. Yes. Uh, light brown, but my father eyes is grey. Okay. Father eyes is grey, and mother and Tejasvi and your brother is uh, having brown brown eyes, right? Brown. Light brown. Right. Okay, we'll consider it as brown. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what do you observe from this table? Can you tell me? What do you observe from this table? Yes, raise your hands. Yes, uh, Rashmi. The majority of population is having black eyes in India. Okay. What else? Ma'am, yeah. may I? Brown and grey is prevalent. Okay. Who is saying may I? Uh, Swati here, ma'am. Yes, Swati. Tell me. Uh, so ma'am uh, almost all uh, family member have the same characters means same color of eyes okay ma'am uh, mostly parents uh, whatever color of eyes parents as uh, like it is most likely that their offspring also have the same color of eyes very good i uh, see my students are a best observer i can see but uh, have you noticed that though we are just talking about eye color that is one of the character of a human uh, human eye that is the eye color we can see different different eye colors among the students of your class there is a variation some are having <coughs> some are having brown some are having gray right in their among their family members so we have a variation in different different eye colors right and have you noticed tejasvi family they just we parent uh, they, they just we have a in in within her family itself you can see that her father is having gray eyes and rest all are having brown eyes so there is a variation in the character or trait that is the term we generally use for the uh, hereditary purpose okay so there is a difference in the character or trait of the eye color within the family members and within your class so what is responsible for this yes rashmi the inheritance so of inheritance of genes 
Jeez, very good. Or in uh, previously in uh, previous uh, time, the genes were called as factors. Okay, so the inheritance of genes or factors are actually uh, responsible that what character of a particular uh, thing you are going to show. That is why you see difference in the color of screen, skins, difference in the color of hair and eyes, right? So today what we are going to do in the subject science, we are going to study unit heredity and revolution and in this we will learn the rule of inheritance with the help of the example. Is my screen changing? OK, with the help of the example of the Gregor Mendel experiment. So students, uh, there were many uh, scientists who were or many people, many uh, people worked on the study of inheritance. Among all those, Gregor Mendel was the person who was able to explain the rules of inheritance and why is it so? Because he blended science and mathematics. OK, so he was able to uh, discuss about every single trait that was responsible for a particular car uh, every single factor that was responsible for a particular trait and he considered the in his experiment he took uh, the uh, uh, pea plant as a model of experiment and in that he considered seven characters of the pea plant that is height seed sh shape seed color seed coat color pot shape pot color and flower position okay so in that um, so what he did is in his experiment he carried out the experiment by considering single traits and by considering more than one trait for the crossing okay so when he was considering single trait in her experiment like he's just considering the sh uh, shape of the plant the size of the plant then he, it is called as mono hybrid trait and when he is considering more than one trait like he is considering here two traits like uh, the color and the um, shape of the seed it is called as dihybrid trait he can he also considered uh, three characters all together okay so to the Mendel's uh, among these dihybrid and monohybrid uh, crossing, we will be learning only today. We will be learning only monohybrid cross. OK, so let's check out the Mendel's monohybrid cross where he did the cross between the pure tall parent and the pure short plant parent plant. OK, we will call it as cross pollination. OK. Please remember these terms. These are not provided in your books, but these are very important term whenever you talk about heredity. OK, so this is called to be as cross pollination student. Please note it down in your copies whenever you are crossing between the traits uh, which are uh, you can say contrasting to each other. We call it as cross pollination. OK, so he uh, he took the parent plant as tall, pure, pure tall pl plant and pure short plant. He did a cross pollination and in the uh, first generation he could find all the plants tall. What do you think is uh, actually responsible? What, what happened excuse that? Excuse me, ma'am. May I ask something? Yes. What do you mean by a pure uh, tall plant and pure tall plant? Wonderful, Rashmi. I was expecting that question from the student, but I find my students are quiet. So pure tall plant and pure short plant. We are talking about the genetic makeup, which you can see over here. So you will understand the genetic makeup also. I'll explain you further. OK? Yeah. OK, yeah. so yes, we'll go step by step. Just now just consider the character, uh, the visual character. OK. Yeah. OK, very good. So. We the F1 generation we call F1 generation as first filial generation. So please note it down. Note this terminology first filial generation. OK, so we are getting only tall plants in our F1 generation when he did a self pollination. That is he crossed between the F1 generation plant only. He could find that he was getting he was not getting all tall plants, but he was getting one some short plants too. 
here he was able to understand that for every character you have two factors or two genes present in the sexually producing organism and both the genes are being uh, contributed by both the parents okay so here you can see when he uh, he tried to explain it with the term of factors he showed that pure tall is having both the uh, genes as capital t capital t so we call it as homozygous trait and then if there is small pure short is having cap small t and small t we call it as a uh, homozygous short plant and okay but in f1 generation you could see only tall plants so there was only one character which was expressing itself so he called that character as dominant character in my previous uh, chart you might have seen on uh, there was a column which says dominant and recessive so on basis of the expression of any character in the first filial generation he called that character as dominant because he could find that only one copy of that character can express itself okay so finally he we are a, we can explain it with the punnett square so we were, this is called to be as punnett square where we try to make the combination of the uh, factors and we got this uh, so you can see that i am getting tt is my pure tall plant capital t capital t okay so why i represented it with capital alphabets because it is a dominant character then we have small t small t which is a <coughs> recessive character because it is see dominant means it is able to express even when the recessive is present okay so the trait or the character which cannot express in the first generation he called it as recessive character and recessive character can express itself only when it is present in homozygous condition so you know what i mean by homozygous condition right i am i am sure that you are writing noting uh, you are copying it down in on in your copies because these are not present in your books okay now here we have uh, capital t small t capital t small t so how we are making t capital t capital t now here what will be in the second capital t and small t and here what will be we'll just take the top capital t here and the uh, small t from here okay and the small t from the column and the small t from the row okay so you can see that i have here capital t and small t which becomes a heterozygous combination of the factors in which only the dominant trait express itself okay so let's take uh, So uh, when I talk about genetic ratio, you can see that I am getting the combination of capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, small t, small t. I just made a ratio of it, okay? And what, uh, what, how many capital T, capital T we are having over here? Just one, right? One. one yes. Man. And how many capital T, small t we are having here? Two. 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 And how many small t, small t we are having here? One. One. So I can make the ratio as one is to two is to one, but you can see, as I told you, that the dominant factor or dominant gene, even if it is present single, it will show what character the dominant character that is dominant. tall. So how many tall we are getting over here? Phenotypically, phenotypically means the appearance. Genetically means gene. Okay. So how three. many uh, three. plants? Three. Okay. So three tall plants and One short one so If I express it in ratio, it is three is to one. So I hope you are clear with this. Now let me find out whether you are clear with this or not. So I'll ask. Uh, so everybody, get ready with your pencil and your copies. Please solve this. What will be the ratio of getting round seed over wrinkled seed when we carry out? self pollination of dominant round seed that is capital r small r of pea plant before you uh, jump to the solution please explain me what do i mean by self pollination what is cross pollination yes Co cross pollination is when we uh, cross uh, or uh, when we 
pollinate two different plants of a particular trait like capital r capital r is the genetic makeup of a single plant and small r small it is the genetic makeup of another plant when we cross them that is cross pollination and self pollination is when we get a filial generation and uh, of the same uh, type that is capital r small r capital r small r and then when we cross them that is self pollination wonderful ashwini i must say you're very perfect but i'll just modify your explanation why i need to modify because when we just re, uh, see the plant we cannot understand what it is gen what its genetic makeup is okay so how we will understand the uh, character the contrasting character when we are taking the contrasting character right round seed and wrinkle seed seed and we are crossing them we call it as cross pollination and when we are just using wrinkle seed and uh, round seed and round seed and we are crossing them then it is called self pollination okay but but here i am giving you the genetic makeup also that is the round seed has a genetic makeup that is capital r small r so i have uh, showed you how to draw a punnett square please draw a punnett square everyone is supposed to draw a punnett square and show me i want to find out whether you have understood the concept or not Tejasvi, Swati, put your camera on. Solve the Punnett square. Capital R, small r crossed with capital R, small r. I showed you. We'll just make a four, um, uh, two column and two rows. That is four check boxes. We'll okay. Uh, yay. So we have the. answer from ashwini i am highlighting it well done ashwini okay it's it's getting blur beta just uh, just um, drag it uh, slightly up get your camera slightly up we want to see your punnett square also very good beta very good to see man wonderful just a second swati just a second very good ashwini well done perfect so i can understand that ashwini has got the concept yes swati show me Yes, Manisha, uh, yes, saying wonderful. Uh, Swati, it's clear. Yes, it's not clear, beta. Rashmi, it's you great. need to write these uh, ratio also. Please write the ratio. The ratio yes, for me, very good. Now, ma'am. Good. Yes, yes. Swati, you have also not written the ratio. You remember I showed you the ratio okay, also. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Smita, slightly towards the camera, beta. Yes, yes. Can you write the genotypic ratio also, Smita? Very good, very good. I must say, uh, I can uh, from your copies, I can understand that you are able to understand the concept really well. So I'm just showing you the answer. and i can see the same answer in all of your copies the genotypic ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 and the phenotypic ratio will be 3 is to 1 is that clear now let yes next our last portion that is recapitulation i want you all to close your books quickly close your books everybody and i want all the cameras on everybody close their books okay so my first question and yes the rule is you have to close your copies uh, close your all your books and copies and the second rule is raise your hands no popping up with answers who gave the rule of inheritance who was the first one to give the rule of inheritance come on everybody i want every hand raised this is a very simple question yes manisha khanwe mundele Re okay it's not mendele only whenever you are going to answer this question you have to write gregor j mendel okay i yes, don't gregor j mendel okay which trait can express itself even when inherited as single copy you have to consider the question completely while answering yes swati 
which trait express itself even when present single copy the dominant one oh rashmi you broke the rule yes yeah. yes <laughs> Yes, ma'am. The I dominant one. I think I with your answer. No rule breaking. I know students love to break the rule. Breaking, rule breaking. Okay. Okay. Now I have a very important and very good question for you all. This will help me to understand your understanding. What do you conclude with the ratio of progeny ratio of you get on cross pollinating, cross pollinating round seeded plant? that is the pure round seeded plant and pure wrinkle seeded pea plant what will be the ratio of progeny that is phenotypic ratio you have to tell me solve it quick and give me the answer yes all the hand i want the hands to be raised One is to one is to one is to one, ma'am. Rashmi, again you are breaking the rule. <laughs> Swati, what did you get? Smita. Why Smita, Manisha, Tejasvi, so silent today. Ashwini, what did you get? Ma'am, all the um, uh, uh, plants will be round in um, seeds will be round. So all, the, all, all will be round. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Very good. So I must say everybody are giving me the correct answer, and I must say you have done a really wonderful job. Uh, just try to uh, consider the seven character and try to <coughs> practice the mono hybrid uh, cross today at home and from and tomorrow in the class we will study the dihybrid cross okay so bye and take care